Hi, I'm Matt Hatton from Transformer Insights. We're here at the IMC's IoT News Desk, live at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. It's day one of CES. I think it's day one. It's it feels day, like it's day it's three or four by one. now, but I think yes. it's still day one. I'm here with Jim Engelson from Fibercom. Jim, welcome. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do. Thank you, Matt. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, as mentioned, I'm with Fibercom Wireless. I'm a director of sales and partnerships here uh, as part of the IoT team for Fibercom Wireless in the U.S. and North America. Um, so we, uh, I do a lot of uh, 5G <coughs> uh, business development and groundwork amongst uh, the, our customers. It's a fascinating space to be in. So I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here and talk more about 5G. A absolutely. We're going to have a friendly conversation about, about 5G. What do you see as being the most promising markets for Fibercom in terms of 5G commercialization? Um, actually, so we've been doing 5G for uh, for many years since the very beginning, and uh, Fibocom as a company, we kind of have three core column business uh, areas: one being IoT, one being PC, and another being automotive. And we've seen success stories around uh, all three of those areas. Uh, in the IoT space, in particular, uh, FWA or fixed wireless access has been. Uh, has been very successful. We uh, we have a lot of um, carrier deployments, um, tenders uh, all around the world, actually, and here in the U.S. in particular. Um, if you're a customer of one of the three, uh, you know, the pink company, we uh, we power that home yep. gateway, uh, which has been uh, wildly successful. Um, but we've seen similar stories around the world in Asia and Europe. So, you know, the whole gateway. 5G, fixed wireless, uh, you know, breaking the last mile. That's been a huge uh, <clears throat> success story for us uh, okay. in that space. F fantastic. And Connected Car as well, you, you mentioned. Did you catch the panel just before where we were talking through I Connected did. Car? I did. I caught the end of that. That was fascinating. Any, any thoughts about how you see the Connected Car market evolving with the, in the context of 5G? Well, I, I, you know, it's, uh, it's obviously already there. Um, you know, from our perspective, our sister company, Rolling Wireless, uh, you know, it's a leading cellular module provider to the automotive space, uh, both 4G and 5G. So, you know, if you're driving a Volkswagen, a Fiat, uh, or a PSA, you know, it's uh, it's got our stuff in it. And <clears throat> yeah, everybody's looking for 5G for that future proofing. You know, particularly in the car market, you know, these solutions need to last, you know, a number of years. So uh, they plan many years in advance for deployments that last, you know, many, many years. So, you know, LTE is sort of, uh, that's gone, and now it's all about 5G and, uh, and the newer 5G technologies that, that bring with that. Interesting. <laughs> Why do you think FWA, I mean, fixed wireless access has been a tremendous success in, in the U.S., certainly. What do you put that down to? I think, um, you know, in the U.S. in particular, the, the carriers uh, obviously are some of the key drivers for that. Um, some more than others, but you know the the, the cost to roll out fiber is really uh, expensive, and it's particularly you know that classic last mile is uh, particularly costly. So you know with with the speed uh, the the. <clears throat> the low latency and the, the technology that 5G brings and the ability to bring, you know, just those broadband speeds mm. into mm. a home is so easy these days. It really is. Okay, we've talked about some of the cool stuff about 5G, the, the, the good bits, the challenges. What are the challenges of 5G deployment and, and yeah, commercialization? There, there's definitely a few. And, uh, you know, first, uh, and this comes up in many uh, customer meetings, but uh, price is definitely a, a challenge uh, for customers all around the world. Uh, for those that are maybe used to uh, or wanting to upgrade from LTE today, um, there's definitely a premium associated with 5G. You mean in terms of the hardware? The hardware cost, yeah. So just the, the simple cost of building a 5G device. Um, it's still, the costs are coming down, which is great to see, but 
compared to LTE, there's still uh, a premium associated with that. And is this just a scale issue in terms of volumes that are shipping, or is there something more fundamental? Can we expect 5G pricing to, to, to come down substantially in the coming few years? It, it, it's definitely on a, uh, on a lower price curve, you know, that that every technology follows. But, um, you know, one of the other challenges with 5G is just the complexity of that compared to LTE. There's just, there's way more bands, you know, which means there's way more uh, carrier aggregation combinations, the NDC combinations, which means you need better or more antennas. Yeah. You know, just sure. so the overall solution uh, becomes more costly um, and challenging to integrate. So it, it's really a combination. You know, will it come down? Absolutely. Um, you know, to these levels of LTE, you know, sort of one to one, that uh, that's probably got a few years to go. We're talking a lot about. I'm going off topic a little bit, but we talk a lot about 2G and 3G switch off, which just happened in, in, yes. in various markets, US particularly. Yeah. So do you think, given those price differentials and maybe the requirement to keep something that's not quite so complex in, in, in terms of LTE, do you think there's a very long-term pro prospect for maintaining LTE? Well, LTE will not, uh, it's not going away. You know, that I think we, uh, we all agree. Um, so that, that'll be a long-term uh, option. Uh, however, <clears throat> you know, as, as the price of 5G does come down or, uh, you know, new spectrum opens up and we're seeing newer uh, 5G technologies that address IoT uh, specifically, you know, that maybe where uh, 3G or 2G might have uh, played in, then, <clears throat> You know, I think you'll you'll see more uh, migration to to 5G, but you know, LTE as a, as a sort of base technology that'll be around. Not like, going away anytime soon. Long, long time. Yeah. Very good. What's next for Fibercom in 5G? Yeah, we have a, a really full roadmap. Um, last, just late last year, we uh, launched uh, what we call our FM 160 series. This is. Uh, module based off Qualcomm's, uh, who we work very closely with, X62 uh, chipset. So this is a release 16 modem. You know, we expect this to last a long time. Uh, this is a, you know, really targeted at sort of bit pipe, um, you know, router gateway type solutions. And then coming up, uh, we also work uh, very closely with uh, MediaTek uh, for other types of solutions. So we have our next generation uh, FG370 module, which is a, a system on module uh, solution. So it's just more than a, a bit pipe. It, you know, it's the modem, it's the application processor. It, uh, it's really what drives a lot of our uh, carrier-based um, uh, gateway, 5G gateway solutions. So it drives the Wi-Fi, it drives the Ethernet, it drives the uh, you know the whole entire system with a built-in processor, as well as provide the 5G connectivity. <laughs> I don't know whether you've had much of a chance to walk the floor at, at, at CES so far. I haven't, but you may well have had more of a chance. <clears throat> any any trends that you've seen um, while you've been here at CES, and more broadly, things that are, you're keeping an eye on in terms of uh, a 5G deployment, or 5G technology evolution, 5G developments that you think are, are interesting ones? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know, there's there's a couple in particular that seem to pop up in every customer meeting that uh, that we have you know one is uh, the idea of 5g private networks um, that's that's very popular the other is uh, the idea of uh, <clears throat> red cap or reduced capacity which is uh, a new technology that will come along with release 17 so we won't see this till you know probably 2024 but this is going to address, REDCap will address the um, kind of the pricing concern that, uh, that we talked about earlier. So the idea of uh, customers that are on industrial IoT solutions today using maybe Cat1 or Cat4, yeah. um, and they're looking to migrate to a newer solution, 
they're kind of holding off, waiting for REDCap so they can get onto uh, a newer 5G platform and the newer 5G networks and really future-proof uh, those solutions, but not at the 5G prices that they see today. Okay. So okay. It, that's, that'll be kind of an exciting uh, trend. But, uh, and then back to 5G private networking, as we uh, talked about, you know, the, just, you know the, the speeds and latency and security that uh, 5G brings today, you know, we've had successful deployments in uh, healthcare, uh, you know, sort of manufacturing or factory warehouses, campuses, those types of things where they can just very easily set up their own uh, network, make it secure, mm. and uh, have it up and running in fairly short order, mm. and not dealing with connecting different devices to different Wi-Fi networks here or there, or, you know. It's, uh, I think it's, um, it's a growing market. It's, it's uh, just sort of getting kicked off today, but uh, I think it holds tremendous potential. Motivations for deploying those kinds of things? Deploying private 5G networks? Most. Uh, the motivations. Oh, motivations. Yeah, I think it's, it's really the ability to take control uh, over the entire, you know, let's call it a campus or a factory, whatever it is, under a, a single sort of pane of glass, you know, be able to control whether it's a, you know, a robot or a camera or, a, you know, a forklift kind of thing. Uh, all under one technology. You know, we've had one customer that, you know, they had like multiple legacy wireless networks. Some were, some were wired, some were wireless, one was Wi-Fi. You know, each had their own sort of different control points. And being able to, you know, not only control everything easily and securely, but then get the relevant data yeah. in a timely manner, that was, uh, that was a big challenge. So, um, you know, to, to kind of walk in and just be able to start fresh and get everything totally on the same controlled network, network control that, that you and really get that timely information and the data you need uh, right away. That's it's a massive uh, motivator. Fantastic. On that note, Jim, thank you very much. Matt, thank you. Appreciate it.